Okay, in this tutorial, we're actually going to now start animating the water. To do that, we need to add a new layer. Now, the animation works best when there's multiple layers, and we can actually have a foreground, background, and a midground sort of layer. And there's no limit to the amount of layers you can actually have in an animation. So, some people use um, one layer per object. Other people can coordinate multiple objects on a stage. So, it's up to you how you develop your skills. But at the moment, we're going to do our foreground water. So, I'm just going to call it FG um, Water. So, it's going to be our foreground water. So, it's going to be foreground as in front of the boat. Now, to do this, I'm going to use the um, brush tool. I'm going to use a fill effect of blue, and I'm going to pick a sort of color that I'll be happy with for my water. So, I'm going to use blue water. And I'm going to change my stroke color to be roughly the same color. So if I wanted to get it perfect, I would best do my stroke color first. And then if I wanted to, I can select this and then use my pipette tool on the stroke color. And I get the perfect one. Otherwise, if you take note of the hexadecimal color, you can always type that straight into the top of the other one. So at the moment, we're happy with that. And I've got my brush tool and I'm going to draw some waves. Now when I draw this, I'm going to make it larger than what the stage is because I want to be able to animate it across and back. Because I'm working on a different layer, I'm not actually going to interrupt the boat. But if I wanted to make sure that the boat doesn't get affected, I should lock that layer. Which means even if I go back down to the boat's keyframe, I can't do anything to the boat. I can't even select it. If I wanted to draw on that layer, even with the brush tool, it won't even let me draw on the layer. So it's a good way of protecting what your work as you go along, but you must manage these. So that's just placing a lock on the layer. Because this layer is unlocked, we can then draw on that. Now as I draw on it, you'll notice it goes from a single or a what's known as a hollow dot and it will become a solid one like the boat layer. That's the difference between having an object on that layer or not. So we're going to draw now the water. So I'm just going to draw some points as we go along. Now the reason why it's larger than the stage, it gives me room to animate. And it's going to go below the stage. So that allows me to lift the water up and down and backwards and forwards. Now I mentioned before that I've actually made a container here. Because there's no breaks in this, and it's one solid object, I can then grab the fill bucket and fill that. If I want to move that, I can now come in and if I click once, I can grab it, I can move it up over the boat. Now the problem with this animation is I can't see the boat behind there. If I want to see the boat, what I need to do is go up to my color and I can actually now change this or change the color um, by going into, sorry, i select that again, I just lost my blue color, select my blue color again. So now once I come in here, I can actually change my alpha. Alpha allows the water to become transparent. As I slide it for 100% down, you notice here you can see the checkerboard. That means how opaque it is in the original color. So I'm going to set this to about 50%. And that now becomes the color of my water. And now you can actually see the boat in behind the water. So it actually looks like the boat is sitting in water now. So that's our basic water sort of animation or our water object and we need to animate this now. But before we do that we might actually put the background water in. So I'm going to add the layer and I'm going to call it BG Water. And I'm going to do the same thing but I'm going to pick a darker blue this time. So I'm going to pick a more deeper blue. That might be a little bit too deep, I might get the one below that. And the same with this one here for the fill effect. I'm going to do the same thing with the brush tool. You can change you know, the properties of the brush, smoothness, etc. down here. And you can change um, the size of your nibs down through here. But I'm going to stick with the larger one that I've got set. And this time when I do, I'm going to do the opposite to the peak. So one peak there. So I'm going to come up in the middle of the ones that I did before. If you're not happy with some of it, like see my loops are too deep, etc., I can grab the subselection tool and push them around, or you can just undo it, Command Z, and just draw it again. 
So sometimes you might have to draw it two or three times just to get the effect that you're looking for. At the moment I'm sort of mimicking the previous water. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to block, lock my foreground water. I'm going to turn them into pencil drawings. By taking the fill colours out, you notice that each layer is given its own colour. And now you can see that the purple one belongs to my foreground water. So when I draw now, I should be able to do it more evenly because I'm not going to get trapped by all the colour confusing me. So I'm just keep working across and go down. Same sort of thing, across the bottom, back up again. So I'm happier with that. So now I'm just going to go to my fill bucket, fill that. I'm now going to turn the colours back on. But the problem at the moment is we've actually got the background water sitting in front of our foreground water sitting in front of our boat. So what that alludes to is our stacking order. Whatever is on the top here is the foreground or the one at the front. Then whatever is behind those is moving towards our back. At the moment our boat is at the back of our whole animation. If I click that and drag that to the top, it's now in front of all our animation. But what we need is our background water at the back our boat in the middle and the foreground water at the front. So I'm going to move the foreground water to the top, a boat in the middle, background water at the back, and now you can actually see our boat sitting in the water. You see how the boat sort of, you can see through the holes, you can see the solid water behind there, and the boat seems to be sitting in the water. But we need to sort of get ready for our animation. To see this as a runtime, if we hold down the command, and go enter, we can actually see our boat or what would be our completed object. So this is how a boat now looks like when it's sitting in the water. So to animate the water though, we're going to turn the top two layers back to drawings and we're going to work with our background water first of all. It is a very good idea at this time that you lock your layers if you haven't done so. To copy a keyframe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push F6 so if you click in here now once the keyframe's in there you notice that I can't see the boat anymore or the foreground water because this keyframe's new but there's nothing else on the same layer as the other keyframes so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up the top here and I'm going to push F6 again just to copy my boat along. Now I'm going to leave my boat as a sort of little pencil drawing so I can see my water as it moves. But when the playhead moves, at the moment the water doesn't do anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the water and I can click on the water and move it across and up slightly or I can use my arrow keys to better off moving it. So you got to remember that I'm working on 25 frames per second so the first 25 frames that's one second a time. So every time you go F6, it adds a new keyframe. I'm going to move it across three with my arrow, up three with my arrows, F6 again. And it's a very slow sort of way of doing this, but for keyframe animation, it's the only way to do it. So I'm going to move across and up for a series of frames. and then maybe uh, about half the time, so around about 12 or 13 frames, I'm going to start moving it across only, and then I'm going to start moving it down. And this will go along for as long as I would like the animation. So you might actually want to, at this point of time, save or pause this uh, movie, go along, add your water animation. Remember, once you get out to about 25 frames per second, then start moving it back to your left. So go up and to your left and down to your left. So you get the water moving across to the right and up and down, and then back to the left, up and down. And I'll just pause it here and complete this. So just to show you my first 25 frames, 
you notice the water goes along, I'm grabbing the playhead and moving that along, it goes along and up, across and down. So what I want the effect to be at the end is something like this, so when the movie's playing, the back of the water is sort of doing this sort of effect. So we'll keep doing this out to, now you've got to remember that's one second. So we're going to have to do this for a little while to get the animation right across the stage. So we'll move this out and repeat this to about frame 150. Just to show you a quicker way of doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first frame, hold down my shift key and select the last frame. If I hold, if I right mouse click or hold down command click, I can actually copy these frames. And if I copy these frames, I can then go to the next one. Once again, right mouse click or command click. I can then paste these frames. Now they're the exact same frames as I had before, but what I want to do is reverse the order of them. So if I hold down my shift key, select the last one, I can now hold down my command, oops, sorry, command key, sorry, I've misclicked that. I hold down my con command or control on the Mac. I can then um, reverse the keyframes. So what happens is it actually swaps them around. So the first one becomes last and the last one becomes first. I'll just come up here, insert shift F6, or oh, function F6, um, F6 so it copies the, the boat across. Now my, my movie clip now moves up and back. So if I run this as a movie, command enter, you can see my movie moves along quite well. So the boat, water's moving along quite nicely with the foreground and the background. So now that we want to go out to say, oh, I might as well go out to about 200, I can actually select the first keyframe, select the last one, copy those. So to do that, you just um, right mouse click or control click on the Mac, copy the frames, and we know that it works quite well now, so we can just paste those frames into position. And then we'll move out again. And we'll just keep pasting these until we get out to frame 200. And then on frame 200, we'll just insert a keyframe to copy our boat all the way out there. When we run our movie now, it'll move across and back and keep doing so. And then it'll loop. So that's a quick way of actually replicating keyframe animation, especially in our case where we're doing the same thing over and over again. Now what we need to do is do the same thing for the foreground water. So we're going to lock our background water, move to our foreground, unlock our foreground water. I'm going to turn my background water into a line drawing. I'm going to select my boat as a solid and turn my water back on. But this time, rather than going to my right, first of all, I'm going to go to my left so the water's doing the, uh, like a sawtooth effect. So once again, we're going to go through the same process of copying the keyframe along. So we'll just go function or on a Mac function F6 or um, just go F6. And then we're going to move the water back and down where the other one we went back and across. And we'll keep going along and do the same thing again where we keep animating that for effect. If you want the water moving at a different rate, just move the water at a slower frame rate, which means basically move one back, one down, where I was going three and three before. So that means the background water will be moving quicker than the foreground water because every step is one frame where the background water was every three or you can do it every two. So rather than working on really if the background water moved across four and up four, we could do half pace on the front water by moving across two and up two. So when your water is finished, you should have an animation that looks similar to this. So the water's moving backwards and forwards and up and down. The boat's sitting in the middle of that. So in our next movie, we're going to look at animating the boat.